In 1996, a British collector of rare aircraft equipment exchanged a decommissioned Harrier GR-3 from his collection for a Soviet propeller fighter provided in return by the Chinese side. Harrier was thoroughly studied by specialists of the Beijing University of Aeronautics and Astronautics, who regularly carried out commissioned research in the interests of the armed forces of the People's Republic of China. In the late 1990s, simultaneously with the decommissioned aircraft carrying cruisers, China purchased several Yak-38 volts TOL aircraft from Russia for detailed study. At the end of 2003, China acquired in Ukraine a test aircraft T-10K-7 from the installation batch of prototypes of the Su-33 carrier-based fighter, released in 1990 for factory tests at the Nitka complex. The aircraft was exported to China in order to study the technical features of the deck version of the Su-27. The design of the folding wing, reinforced landing gear, brake hook, as well as radio equipment used for landing on an aircraft carrier and takeoffs from the deck. In addition, the Ukrainian side handed over documentation on the strength tests that were performed on this T-10K at the Research Institute of Aeroelastic Systems Feodosia, Crimea. Having gained their own experience in the production of GR-11 fighters based on the Russian Su-27SK fighter, Chinese engineers may well use the results of research on design features to create their own VTOL. The development of VTOL was not among the priorities of the Celestial Empire. However, now that China has become the owner of the Liaoning and Shandong aircraft carriers and in the future, the Fukien nuclear aircraft carrier, this project is being talked about again. According to the Chinese Navy Command, the capabilities of a small aircraft wing of aircraft carriers of national production in the event of a hypothetical conflict will be severely limited. Since in addition to long-range sorties, aircraft will have to perform tasks to ensure the air defense of an aircraft carrier strike group. Several VTOL-type fighters could significantly increase the combat capabilities of aircraft carriers without taking up much space on the upper deck and in the hangar. Chinese military experts believe that in the near future, there is little chance that China will take part in hostilities far from the coast. Rather, Beijing will be involved in a local conflict with amphibious operations directly in its own or nearby territorial waters. The VTOL type fighter is best suited for such types of combat operations. Even a poorly equipped runway will be useful for receiving such aircraft. Military observers of the People's Republic of China emphasize that such aircraft can be placed not only on aircraft carriers, but also on aircraft carrying Universal Amphibious Assault Ships UDC of Project 075, with a displacement of about 40,000 tons, comparable in terms of TTX with American counterparts. The absence of a GR-18 Type 5 TOL in China significantly reduces the ability of amphibious forces to independently conduct large amphibious operations primarily due to insufficient capabilities for air support of troops ashore. To solve this problem, the option of joint use of the UDC with aircraft carriers under construction at least six units by 2030 is not excluded. For the development of VTOL, the Chinese military industry has to overcome many technological and technical difficulties. But experts express confidence that she is capable of such a task. Since the principles of this technology have been known for a long time they have been for more than 40 years. Such an aircraft will actually be able to enter service with the Air Force Navy of the People's Republic of China only after 2027. The first results of the development of the Chinese-made Jian 18 volts TOL can be demonstrated at one of the annual Chinese military parades, dedicated to the day of the formation of the People's Republic of China October 1st. However, the lack of scientific and technical groundwork in the PRC in this area of aircraft construction pushes this moment. According to China Daily, China's aviation industry is working on the development of aircraft with short takeoff and vertical landing capabilities needed for an important role in the Chinese Navy's future operations. Military experts said, research and development on components of STOVL aircraft, such as the engine, have started, Wang Yanan, 
Deputy Editor-in-Chief of Aerospace Knowledge Magazine Told China Daily The aircraft's principles are not new. They have been known for more than 40 years, so our aircraft designers should be able to develop the plane on their own, Wang said. Compared with conventional fixed-wing aircraft, ASTOVL plane can be readied for action in a shorter period of time and occupies less space in a hangar bay or on the deck of a ship. These features have made it a popular choice for naval powers since late 1960s, when Britain's subsonic hawker Sidley Harrier became the first STOVL aircraft to be put in service. Almost all STOVL aircraft in active service are based on the Harrier design, and they form the backbone of the naval forces of India and Spain. This move is not the first time China has aimed to build ASTOVL aircraft. In the late 1960s, the PLA asked the aircraft institutes to develop a fixed-wing plane capable of vertical takeoff and landing. The project was later abandoned due to technical difficulties. The PLA also tried to buy the Hawker Sidley Harrier in the late 1970s, but dropped the attempt because of cost, according to Western military observers. This time, AVIC appears to have made the right decision at the right time as the PLA Navy now needs ASTOVL aircraft because it will significantly supplement and improve its amphibious capabilities. Wang said, If China had STOVL aircraft, they could be deployed on the CNS Liaoning and other ships to defend against incoming enemy aircraft, relieving the burden on the J-15s, which could then focus on long-range operations, Wang said. Actually, in the foreseeable future, I don't see a high probability of China's involvement in a war far from its shores. Being dragged into limited amphibious conflicts in or near our territorial waters would be more likely. The STOVL aircraft will be the best choice for air support in such conflicts. Wang said, noting that it would be a perfect match for China's future amphibious assault ships. In late March, the Aviation Industry Corp of China, the country's leading aircraft maker, announced on its website that two of its subsidiaries Avic Chengdu Engine Group and China Aviation Engine Establishment have signed a cooperation agreement on the development of the STOVL aircraft's engine. The statement said the STOVL aircraft project aims to strengthen the People's Liberation Army Navy's amphibious combat capability and address the absence of such a weapon in the PLA's arsenal.